Yeah. How's it going, Johnny? Good. Um, well, I am just about to leave here. I'm all packed up, and I'm just about to hit the road. Okay. I'm got a ways to go to get home, but I'll be there before you. Sounds good. Well, I'll let you know when I'm getting close. All right. Thank you. Yeah. See you, Zach. Yeah, bye. Bye. All right, we're about to leave the Red River Valley and we're heading out west. So we are heading out to the Drift Prairie, if you know your North Dakota geography. Basically in North Dakota, you got the Red River Valley, you got the Drift Prairie, and you got the Missouri Plateau. So the Missouri Plateau, that's way out west. But we're just going out to my buddy out west who is a cattle farmer. So I think we're gonna have some fun times on his ranch and we're gonna ask him some good questions. We're gonna feed cows and we're gonna have a good time. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Red River Valley of North Dakota. A land flowing with milk and honey. You're watching Beat Farmin' Mitch. Well, folks, we've successfully made it to the ranch. Well, dang, Nabbit, good to see you, Slick. Yeah. So, is this where the cows are at, or what? No, not the other ranch. <laughs> well, we ordered the Bronco here. Coca-Cola. Where do you want me to park, Slick? I'll let you take the home spot. The home spot? Ooh, we got a CB in this rig, huh? Got you, don't got a, you don't got a CB for all your cows? No, sir. You could just strap one on their back and, you know, then they're in, you're in touch with them. And if something goes bad, you know, you got, you can just phone you on the CB. Hey, Brooks, our water's freezing up. That's true, that's true. So, uh, you've been farming long? I've been trying. You even got the good stuff over here. The good stuff. The crystal sugar. My All right, where's your pride and joy? Look oh, at right this. Here. This is top of the line. Every farmer's dream. So you got the case stuff on top. Give us a little tour of the shelf. Oh, if you will. Well, this is mixed brands. Got the case. You gotta represent the original, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you got Case and Stagger, and it's kind of blending into when they became Case IH. And you got the John Deere, you know. Yeah. And you got New Holland representing. And you got Massey and Echo. You got some forty twenties in here. 4440, all the iron horses, my sir. Anteater Nation. Yeah, they just don't make them like they used to. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. Well, good morning, everybody. We are going for a land tour this morning, check out the local scene a little bit, and then we're gonna go feed cows. Yes, sir. And we got a fun little surprise after that, too, huh? Do you ever hate sloughs? Oh, we do. When it's dry enough? Yes, sir. You ever buried a baler to the frame in some slough muck? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> baler, right? No, we don't. I didn't even know Kubota made balers, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I didn't know until about five years ago either. Huh. So is this what we're having for breakfast over here? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Well, is it time for some chores here, boss, or what? Oh yeah, we're gonna get them tractors warmed up and then bales fed and pull down, biff it. So what time do you normally do chores at? Generally in the morning. In the morning, but it's a Saturday, so a little later. Yes, sir. See how the hydraulic hose go out on the loader. Oh, so these things just couple right in there. They just plug in, huh? Yep, these loaders are built by Quakey. The same with Versatile. These are both Quakeys. The only ones who make their own loaders now are Kubota and John Deere. Really? Huh. So you just tighten the threads down on there and we're good to go. Yeah. Man, you guys got easy hydraulic hose fixes here. I never used to be this easy. So this is your feed wagon tractor here? Yes, sir. 
2015 New Holland T6155. Nice. So now the Puma, huh? Yes, sir. So then every day you use the loader tractor and the feed wagon, and that's those are the tools you need? Yep, those are what we use for the feed rations. I get a ration of silage. You got any beet? Hey, a fun little fact about sugar beets here. A byproduct of sugar beets is beet pulp, the pellets. You ever deal with any uh, beet by sugar beet ago byproducts? We have. A long time ago. It's hard to get now. Replacement heifers from last year, so these gals will have babies in April. Okay. So you got a cow calf operation? Yes, sir. We so, when the cow raise our calves, we'll get them up to about 500 pounds, sometimes a little more. So, basically, in short, you calf out your cows. And then when they're one year old, that's when you sell them. Well, usually they're eight months. Eight months, and then somebody else feeds them out, and then they go to slaughter. Sure. Okay, and isn't that like a majority of North Dakota ranches? Yeah. Cow calf. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. So, what is this thing technically called? It is a livestock shaker paddle. Helps us get them moving faster out of the areas. Saves on the voice. Otherwise, you're giving them a little hooting and hollering to get them moving. This is just sacred as you can see. They're kind of leaving and they know where to go for the most part. Oh, so you shake that and that's kind of their dinner bell. Pretty much. Oh. Get food here after a bit. Oh. So obviously it's winter. Yeah. So obviously grazing is not as much of a thing. So you feed them mostly in the winter. Then in the summer, do you graze them out? Yes, we do. They'll probably go to pasture in April. So what, what breed do we got here? Or breeds, should I say? We are primarily Hereford and Angus. We have both red and black Angus cows. We have a couple of red Angus bulls, mostly black Angus cows there. So I'm running the feed wagon and you're running the loader today, is that the plan? Yep, I'm gonna give you a quick little crash course on how to drive this new home. So you want me to crash this thing is what I hear. I mean if you wanna buy a new Holland, that'd be fine. Oh, here we go. This is called the electrical man, but it is a power shift. We'll be in low range, but when you shift to high, you just push it forward, go boom, 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 boom. Okay, so there's a high range, low range, and then you got your gears on the, the thr yeah. stick there. Yeah, right there. And, and then throttle. And then I assume this joystick here is front loader. Yep, and when we go in the one lot to make the corner, we have to pull back on it. So we make the corner and we don't smoke the fence or building. Pretty much. And uh, this wonderful little guys are PTO. Yeah. All right, he's a cake. using it in a minute here. And I saw you mess up the hydraulic levers. You got one for the so chute over there. One. And you push it forward, lock it in. Oh, it's got augers on there. That's kind of cool. Shut that off, and this blue one lifts the door when we get the product in there. You auger it all out. Always make sure you open the door before we start filling it with silage because it could be froze down, it hasn't happened, but okay. if it did, be bad, but we know it's working now. Okay, seems pretty straightforward here. We are on the move. There's Mr. Brooks over there. We're gonna go follow him and let her out. Oh, yeah, okay, he wants me to loop around here and face the other direction. Okay, now we're gonna fire up the PTO. That's what's 
what's in this pile here, all that. See, this is what I'm familiar with here. That's the good stuff there. Yeah, but what about this thing? I've I, never I seen know that what in does. our tractors. What does it do? So we got the feed wagon running over there, and that's basically just some augers in there spinning that mixes it up. Uh, in this series, it's a real augie. So there's a big reel in there. Okay. And two little logs. I should have gone for a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll dump a little bit of this in there slowly. That reel. We'll tumble it around kind of like your mixer in your kitchen. Okay. Oh yeah, I can kind of see the top of it there spinning around every once in a while. And the hawkers will beat it up finer until that door is open. they will all stay in the wagon, beating it and mixing it. Okay. So that was that grass and rye straw ration. And then over here you got some corn silage. Yes, sir. Got the corn silage. So, did you like store this in a bunk and pack it down and stuff at any point, or? No. Well, we do our silage is we have a chopper come in, and then he comes with his chopper and trucks. He dumps it in a pile. We use this tractor, that tractor, and then we have a 9350 with a blade on it push it in a pile, pack it down, and it preserves the silage, giving it the feed value it does. Okay. Pure good stuff. Right? See, it's the silage you want to be a little careful with, because with this nice weather we get in North Dakota, it freezes, we get chunks, it's really fast. So it's got to beat it around a little longer, otherwise we'll shear the shear bolt on the beef okay. Okay. So you really gotta be careful with that one. Here it goes, frozen chunk. Come on baby, keep spinning, keep spinning. Beating her up. Oh, oh, you can see the whole machine rattle a little bit. There, it made it. Yep, she's beating it up now. It's like cooking for a hundred plus people every day. I'm driving. So they probably know it's dinner time now that we're wheeling by with the tractor, huh? Oh yeah, you know. And what you wanna do is you wanna square this chute up with there's the south edge of this bunker in the middle. So we wanna square it up with the south edge or in the middle because it'll shoot out a little bit. Yeah. The bunk's filled now. I'm gonna hop out of the gate here. Now 
offer Mitch's favorite part, putting the sugar on top of the cookie. So this is the mineral blend here. All right guys, it's almost lunchtime. The claw! <laughs> so we're done with this tractor now, so we're putting her back in the shed. It's a little bit of a hill climb coming in here. Yes, sir. You good? Clear? My grandpa will let you know if you guys scratch up his door. All right, sounds good. Oh, all the way back. See, back in my day, if you turn it all the way off, you hit the little lightning bolt and everything stays on, the battery and... Back in your day? Yeah, that's never good. So now what's the plan here, Chief? Well, we're gonna grab these two lovely looking bales right at the end of the road here. I'm gonna do that. Give it to those calves. And we're gonna let them calves Go out and eat. Oh, I don't think I have near the loader scales Brian Sunny has. The moo moos. The moo So we're dumping these in the bale ring here? Yep. We missed the wrong way because the cams have moved it around so much it was facing the right way. So this, this lot's ready here. Yeah, they're ready. They're ready for dinner. Come and get it. So is that everybody? Yes, it is. So we just fed the calves and these are the heifers here. Well, and then you got some more cattle over there. What are those guys? There's the main cows. Those are the breeding cows. And then that's everybody. That's the whole family. All the bulls are up on top. The bulls are up on top of the hill. So you do a lot of baling, different types of things. You know, you got some bean straw, corn stover, some prairie grass, brome grass, alfalfa. Total, all your bales. What do you kind of put up on an average year? 1500 bales each year. 1500 bales each year. And we'll usually have maybe 20 or so left over by the time things are done. So it's pretty tight. Yeah, we feed all we can. You gotta keep them warm and going and healthy. So we're popping off an electric fence here so that we can get through with the tractor. You ever been zapped by that thing before? That hurts. Now the older crew gets their food. What we're going to do is we're going to roll it out. We're going to roll it out. Because we don't have a bale processor. So okay. Spread in the food. So do you take all these cows yourself? Yeah, and they're why we have so many different colored tags is who they belong to. So like I have orange and then my father and I have some cows together. They're the pink. He has some straight out that are tagged green. My brother is red. My sister's purple. Then we have some white tag ones that get split up differently again. Okay. So, a lot of extra book work so everybody knows what they have. So you got some black Angus in here. I guess like, you know, as a consumer, I go to the store and a lot of times they market black Angus. What's the big rave about that? The big rave is the marbling. The marbling. You know, because you go get a burger somewhere and it's like certified black Angus. 
Well, then you know you got some good marbling. So if you got some good marbling, you got some good fat. If you got some good fat, you got some texture. good texture. Texture. Beef. That's so what's for dinner. So what's your favorite cut? A good T-bone is a good, good steak to eat. What's yours? I like... I like ribeyes and T-bones, you know, but my favorite thing about the T-bone is you get two kind of meats there, you know? There's just, you know, the big side, kind of the classic steak, and then you got the small side that just melts like butter in your mouth. That's the best stuff right there. I usually like to start with that and then finish with that side. The small so side is the best. you like a medium rare? Medium rare, yep. See, what I always judge it by is when you cut your steak, perfectly cooked steak to me, it has that nice pink color in the middle, but there's just that little thin layer of like blood and oil on the plate after you cut it. That dip your fries in it after. There, dip your fries in it. That's a that's, where that's a prime at. cut right there. Prime cut, cook prime. Look real close, we got a pheasant in with the cows here. Well, this is kind of a fun little excursion feeding some cows today, doing some chores, but we got another surprise coming. Well, we got done with chores. Now we're going out for a little country cruise. Scope out the local scene. I got my Coca-Cola cup holding here on the dash. Life's good. The biggest little town in North Dakota. We're gonna be going down by the Cheyenne River. The Cheyenne River, longest river in North Dakota. Oh, we got some deer munching on the bales. Can you have like some serious bail loss if you got deer? Yes. Welcome to Macville. We're gonna make it up this ice road here. Yeah, I think the road ends up here, but it just falls off to get to here. We're on a mission. All right, Brooks, what do we got in here? Whoa, we got some oats and rye in here, mostly rye though. Oh yeah, we got our fluffy surprise right here. And they're hungry. We got a flock of sheep. So you feed them an oat and rye mixture, and then is this just a like a hay bale in here? Yeah. A grass mixture? Red clover and alfalfa. So how often do you feed these sheep? Grain every day. And they'll eat the bale, go through a bale once a week. On the run. They're feeling good. So what do you do with these sheep? They're my hobby. So you get them sheared? Yes, every April. Every April. Do you get paid for the wool or anything? Not very much. <laughs> so you're a farmer, you're a rancher. And a shepherd. And a shepherd. So what uh, breed are these? They're mostly Dorset and Polypay. The black one's gonna have some Suffolk. So, we're not in the Red River Valley, but we're not too far out of the Red River Valley. What would you consider? Part of where we are falls in the Cheyenne River Valley, but where we're at right now is part of the Devil's Lake Basin. So I met Mr. Brooks <laughs> through college at NDSU. All about farming kind of was our center link. He was kind of the guy that knew both of us. Next to farmers gather, you know. That's true. So anyway, thank you for joining this tour of a North Dakota cow calf operation, and we got to meet some fluffy friends along the way, and my buddy Brooks. But anyway, this is Beat Farm and Mitch. 
And be firm and Brooks. And don't forget to keep it sweet. <laughs>